Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving an exponential equation. A very exponential equation indeed. So we have x to the power 3 to the power x is equal to 512 and we're going to be looking for the x values. Now, you can obviously guess and check with this equation but we also have to do a little bit more on that one. I'm going to show you a couple couple different approaches and I'm also going to show you the graph of the function on the left hand side. It's hard to see the intersection points because 512 is such a large value so it doesn't really fit the screen unless you make your graph super duper small. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started. First of all, I want you to set these equal to each other and then ln both sides. A lot of times with exponential equations, if you don't have an immediate solution, you may want to align both sides, bring the exponents down, and look at it from a different angle. That's definitely going to help. So we have ln x to the power 3 to the power x equals ln 512. Now, in case you didn't know, 512 can be written as 2 to the 9th power or 8 to the 3rd power. So there's different ways to write it using powers, and these are the ways you can write it. So now, what can I do using properties of ln? We can go ahead and bring this down. So we get 3 to the power x times ln x equals ln 512. At this point, it's not clear what the x value is. Uh, looking at this, I see that, okay, I can use 2 to the ninth power or 8 to the third power. How about starting off with the 8 to the third power. I'm going to write this as 8 to the third power and then go ahead and move the 3 here. So uh, my idea is here, my thinking is basically to get the same type of pattern on both sides. So for example, if you get something like x ln x equals 5 ln 5, then we can safely say that x equals 5 works in this equation. That doesn't necessarily mean it's the only solution. We still have to check if there are any other solutions. And in some cases there are. Now, so we're going to do something similar, 3 to the x ln x equals 3 times ln 8. So comparing these two things, I noticed that I do want 3 to the power x to be 3 in order to get some type of correspondence, and that implies x equals 1, and at the same time I want ln x to be ln 8, which implies that x equals 8. But these two facts contradict each other, therefore this method is not going to work which means I end up with 2 to the ninth power. So let's, so let's go ahead and do that. We get 3 to the x, we get 3 to the x, ln x equals ln 2 to the ninth power. So it's not totally guess and check. I looked at different ways. I can write 512 as a power, and then I tried 8 to the third. It didn't work. Now I'm tr testing 2 to the ninth power. We're going to go ahead and move the 9 over here, just like before. 3 to the x ln x equals 9 times ln 2. And then from here, I'm going to do the same thing. I do want 3 to the power x to be 9, and I want ln x to be ln 2. What does that imply? 3 to the x equals 9 implies x equals 2. ln x equals ln 2 implies x equals 2. Now, remember, ln x is always increasing. You know, the graph of ln function looks like this. It intersects at 1, so on and so forth. It has an asymptote at 0. You should know these basic graphs, by the way, uh, because they are very important. They come up all the time. So we can safely say that x equals 2 is the only solution. So this is pretty good because we got a solution, and that seems to be x equals 2. So it satisfies the equation. And I know a lot of folks already saw this, and they're like, oh, I can do this in 30 seconds, and I can do this in 5 seconds. You guys are amazing. So... I'm not that fast, but uh, I could probably still do this in one minute, maybe. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and take a look at the other approach. What is the other approach? Well, it's not like an entirely different approach, something similar. I don't know why I wrote 3 there, but anyways, we can fix this. So we have x to the power 3 to the power x is equal to 512. So this is my thinking, just like before, without aligning both sides. So... By the way, uh, there's one thing that we need to look at, but we're going to look at it later. So here... I'm thinking, can I write 512 as a power but so that there's a base uh, which is x and there's an exponent which is 3 to the x? Well, we got two options, 2 to the 9th and 8 to the 3rd. If I go by 8, that means x is going to be 8. So if I go by this, right? 
that means x is 8, and this is going to be 3, which means x is 1. So that doesn't help. How about 2 to the ninth power? Is that going to work? Well, can x be 2? Yes, the answer is yes, because now we can write this as x to the power 3 to the power x equals 2 to the power 3 to the power 2. Therefore, the x values match. All right? Make sense? And from here, we basically get x equals 2. But here's one thing that we didn't talk about. Is that the only solution, right? Are there any other solutions? And how can I check? There's different ways to check it, obviously. One method is take a look at this exponential function. And you can definitely compare this to x to the power x. Now, we have x to the x and x to the power 3 to the power x. Remember, the graph of x to the x looks like this, right? It's going to decrease and then increase, making a minimum. Uh, and it's just going to keep going forever. And x to the power 3 to the power x is actually a function that... It, what is the word? That grows faster. Yes, that was the word. So it grows faster, and obviously that's going to uh, exhibit a similar behavior, right? But it's just going to grow faster. And I'm going to show you the graph of it in a little bit. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the derivative of this function to get a better idea. So we have, let's say, f of x equals, we have f of x equals x to the power 3 to the power x. I'm going to ln both sides like before. That's going to give me 3 to the x times ln x. And I'm going to differentiate f prime over f equals the derivative of the first function times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first function. And if you go ahead and, uh, you know, just take out the 3 to the power x, you're going to get ln 3 ln x. And then from here, you should be getting plus 1 over x. But I'm going to go ahead and multiply this by x and then add the 1 so that I can make a common denominator. So here's the thing. If I want this, and f of x obviously is never going to be 0, so don't worry about it. I want this to be 0, like looking for a critical point for this function. And then here, here's what I find. Uh, this can't be 0, so I want this to be 0, ln 3 ln x, x plus 1 equals 0. And that implies that x ln x is equal to negative 1 over ln 3. So that's kind of like a ln 3 is slightly greater than 1. When you divide 1 by that, you're going to get something greater than 1, like 1.1-ish maybe, 1.2-ish, but that's going to be a negative value. So negatively, it's less than negative 1. You get something on the right-hand side that's less than negative 1. But guess what? x ln x cannot take that value because it makes a minimum at some point. You can, again, differentiate this. I'm not going to get into details. I, want, I just want to show you the graph, but let me just tell you, this is not possible. Therefore, this function has no maxima or minima, no critical points. That means it's always going to be increasing or decreasing. But in this case, everything looks positive because x is positive, this is positive. Therefore, f is always going to be increasing. Let me go ahead and show you what the graph of this function looks like, and hopefully you're going to agree with me. Yes, this is y equals x to the power 3 to the power x, and as you can see, it's always, always increasing. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.